Hi everybody, Physics Ninja. Uh, in the previous video, I considered two wires and I looked at the force acting between them. I now have a more complicated problem. I have three wires. They are carrying currents either out of the page or into the page. And my goal today is how do we calculate the magnetic force on the top one over here. So they're placed at the vertices of this equilateral triangle. How would you apply our formulas to calculate the net force on this particular wire? Okay, like with all my videos, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's get started. All right, my previous video on magnetic forces, I looked at parallel and opposite currents, right? So for parallel currents, we applied our magnetic force equation and we found that the force between both of those wires was attractive and the magnitude of the force, at least the force per unit length of wire was given by this expression. So it depends on the both values of the currents and also on the distance that separates them. Uh, we also found that if currents were in opposite directions, that the magnetic force had the same magnitude. However, in this case, it would repel each other. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this result in order to find the magnetic force for our triangle arrangement. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so for the first method here that I'm going to show you is I'm going to use the previous result because I know the force acting between two parallel wires. So let's just start by labeling all our various wires. Okay, I'm gonna call this one number one, number two, and number three. They're all going to have the same current. In this case, I'll just assume that it's 15 amperes, and they're all separated by 10 centimeters. Now, the previous result said this very, very important statement, that if I have currents in opposite direction like I do here, one and two is in the opposite direction. One and three are also in the opposite direction. And I'm considering all the forces on one. So I know that currents that carry current in opposite directions are going to repel each other. So what does that mean? Well, that means if I consider the interaction between one and two, I should have a magnetic force that is repelling. Okay, I'm gonna call this force F. And the force per unit length is given by my equation right here. So that is the magnitude of that force. Now we'll have to worry about the direction in just a minute, but let's also consider the interaction between wire one and wire three down here at the bottom. Again, these uh, currents are in the opposite direction. So if I'm looking at the forces on wire one, those should repel each other. Now in this case, all of the currents have the same magnitude of 15 amps. So that means that all of these vectors are going to be the same magnitude. They just simply have different directions. Now we have to consider uh, what is that actual direction right here. Now again, this is an equilateral triangle, which means that this angle here has to be 30 degrees. And you should be able to convince yourself that this is 30 degrees, and also that this one is 30 degrees. All right, now any vector I can break down into components. So if I first look at this one over here, um, this one here I can break down into an X component. I call this FX. And I can also break it down into a vertical component. I'll call that vertical component FY. Now that interior angle on this side here has to be 60 degrees. Now I could do the exact same thing for the opposite one, right? I'm going to have an FX component. And I'm going to have a vertical component, which is, let me just write it over here as FY. Now you should be able to convince yourself that since both of those red vectors are the exact same magnitude, that this guy and this guy are also the same length because everything is symmetric. Therefore, those components are going to cancel out. And that means that my total component of my magnetic force, right, F total, has to be simply the sums of these vertical components, right? It's going to be Fy plus Fy, which is two times Fy, All right? Simply adding this purple vertical component and the green vertical component. Now, how can I write this vertical component? Now I just use a little bit of trigonometry. So it's going to be, I can use the angle 60 for example. So it's going to be F sine of 60 degrees. And F I know right here, at least F per unit length. So if I'm looking for the force total per unit length, well, all I have to do is simply divide by L. And the expression here in the bracket is everything I have up here. 
So all we have to do now is to calculate that force. And again, this force here has to only be in that vertical component, right? There is no other component. So let's substitute everything in there. So we get two. Now I substitute my force per unit length equation, mu zero over two pi. I get both values of the currents. In this case, they're the same uh, over D and then sine of 60. Uh, sine of 60 is root three over two. All right, we now get our final value. Just substitute in all our values, numerical values. So mu naught is four pi times 10 to the minus seven uh, divided by pi. Both currents are 15, so that gets 15 squared divided by 0.1. That's the distance between each wire. And then we have root three over two. Uh, we can factor out or cancel out a couple terms here. The pi's cancel out. Uh, one of these two will get eliminated. And now I'll we'll just substitute everything in the calculator. Assuming I've done this correctly and never any guarantees in life, but I get uh, something to the order of uh, 7.8 times 10 to the minus four uh, newtons per meter. Now that is in the y direction, so I'll just add a j hat vector, a unit vector along the y direction. All right, so this is kind of method one where I just add the force vectors given this previous re result that I showed uh, how to calculate. Uh, in method two, we're going to first calculate the total magnetic field produced by both of these wires and then apply our magnetic force equation. It's a little bit different, but uh, let's see how we work it out using the second method. All right, let's look at this problem slightly differently now. So we're going to look at the total force acting on this wire. But what we first have to do is find what is the total magnetic field um, at that position. Okay, and that total magnetic field is basically produced by the other two currents. So what you have to remember is that the magnetic field produced by any current um, is circumferential, right? It makes a circle around that wire. So if you first consider this one here, I'm gonna change the color here to purple. Okay, if I consider the magnetic field produced by wire number two at this position, again, it has to make a circle around that wire. And at this specific position, it has to be tangent to the circle. This would be the field B2 produced by this current at that position. How about the same thing now for wire three? Wire three will produce a magnetic field everywhere in space. And at this position, it will, again, if you think about a big circle going around wire three, at this position, I have to draw a vector that is tangent to the circle, and this would be the vector B3. Now, we use the fact that both of these currents are 15. They are the same distance away. Therefore, we have that the magnitude of B3 has to be equal to the magnitude of B2, and that's simply the equation produced um, the magnetic field produced by any current, okay, a long wire, is mu naught multiplied by the current divided by two pi r. R is the distance now from the wire to where I'm evaluating the field. Now again, if we consider both of these vectors, any vector I can break down into two components. So let's do the green one first. Uh, the green one I can break down into a component that is along the x direction and a component that is along the y direction. I would call this one B3Y. I would call this one here B3X. I could do the same thing for the purple. The purple is going to have an X component that points like this. And I call this one B3X and a vertical component, which I call B3Y. Now, you can tell by the symmetry of the problem and since all the currents are the same, that this component of the vector and this component of the vector have to sum to equal to zero because they are the same thing. Okay, we have to have that B total in the Y direction should be equal to zero. Okay, because both of those components are the same. <clears throat> now, convince yourself, again, this if you draw an, a kind of a clearer diagram than the one I have, that this interior angle here is actually 30 degrees. So what you have here is that B3X um, has to be equal to B3 uh, cos of 30 degrees, okay? And it's also the exact same thing for uh, B2X. B2X is also B2 cosine of 30 degrees. So what does that mean for my total magnetic field? The total magnetic field at that position has to only be in the X direction and I simply add up both of those components, but they're the exact same. So I'm just gonna write as two, say B2 cosine of 30. 
B2 and B3 have to be the same. And now I can substitute my expression down over here. Um, so I get 2 mu 0 times the current. And again, divided by uh, 2 pi. Uh, R is going to be that 10 centimeters, and I can't forget this cosine of 30 degrees. All right, uh, let's simplify that a little bit. The factors of 2 here cancel out. And what are we left with? Um, all right, so now we have to use our equation. I, my goal was to calculate the magnetic force. So let me clean up this figure here because we have way too many things going on. And let me just draw the total magnetic force. Okay, clean that up as much as I can. All right, let's draw that total magnetic force here is simply along this direction. And it's along the x direction. Let me get rid of that angle. I no longer need that. So now we have a much simpler problem. I have a current that is coming out of the page. And I place that in a magnetic field that is pointing along the x direction. So my magnetic force is pretty straightforward. My magnetic force is going to be the value of that current, which is simply I, uh, multiplied by the length of that wire. And again, multiplied by the field. Uh, the field magnitude is this guy. It's mu zero I cosine of 30 degrees divided by pi times R. Now, usually you have to worry about the angle between both of those vectors, but that angle is going to be 90 degrees. So although for a cross product, there's sometimes a sign of the angle between that, it's sine of 90, which is simply equals to one. So I'm not even gonna worry about adding this term over here. All right, at the end of the day, if I'm looking at the force per unit length, I simply divide by the length on each side and I can eliminate both of those factors. Okay, and now I simply just combine both of those currents, right? Both of those currents can be grouped together. Uh, that means I would simply have to square this term. All right, so the last thing I have to worry about now is what is the direction of this magnetic force when I apply this definition right here? So it has to be in the direction of the vector L cross product with the total magnetic field. Now L is coming out of the page. Right, so think about here, we have a current that's coming out of the page. We have the x direction or the magnetic field, which is that way, that's along the x direction. And I have the y direction acting up. Okay, so this current here is really along the z direction, right? Um, so what does this look like? So the current cross product with um, the total magnetic field will give me a vector that is acting in the y direction, okay? This is the right-hand rule number one that I described in the previous video, okay? So that means that over here, I can add a j hat vector to indicate that direction. All right, so that's it. At the end of the day, you can go ahead and calculate what the magnitude of that force is, and we're going to get that the force per unit length uh, has to be the same thing as the previous result, 7.8 times 10 to the minus four. That is in newtons per meter, and that has to be along the y direction is the total magnetic force acting on that top wire. All right, thanks for watching, folks.